The producer of Aliens is Gail Ann Hurd. And Gail, it strikes me that maybe women in the motion picture industry involved in fantasy and science fiction films are not quite as prominent as many of the men are. True or false? I think, I think that's, that's not exactly true. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it's because of my orientation that I'm aware of it. But um, Rafaela de Laurentiis was the producer on Dune. Deborah Hill produced The Dead Zone. That's true. One of the Stephen King novels. Uh, Martha Schumacher produced another of Stephen King's screenplays, uh, Cat's Eye, and is currently the producer on Maximum Overdrive. Now, and for the record, your own involvement with James Cameron, Terminator and Aliens, is actually only part of the story. You've been involved in other fantasies as well. Right. When I, when I worked for Roger Corman, I, uh, I started out entirely on, on science fiction and horror films, which was his bread and butter. What's your assessment generally of Battle Beyond the Stars from hindsight? Let me see. Um, I would have done it differently if I'd, if I'd had the opportunity. Uh -huh. But, but I was a, a hired gun, as it were, on that picture, and it was up to me, basically, not to, to interfere on the creative side. Many people have different reactions to working with Roger Corman. What did you learn most from that experience? I learned a little bit of everything mm -hmm. from Roger. Um, I think primarily I learned how to keep a film on time and on budget, and through extrapolating the experiences that I had working for him, I think I was able to add another element of my particular taste and my particular focus on characters, which wasn't so much mm -hmm. uh, something he concentrated on. Is it more accident or design that you have been involved in so many fantasies up to now? I really enjoy the genre. Well, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you would say that. And having said that, could you elaborate a little bit? Uh, for example, in the genre, has there been ample room for fully developed female characters? I think it's been rare. I think, think women, not only in, in the genre, but in other genres, tend to be either girlfriends or victims and are ancillary to the male hero. And I, and I think, hopefully with Aliens, we're establishing a new trend towards strong women characters who are the focus of the action and the story itself. On the flip side of that, isn't it also true that, well, Halloween is a classic example of the woman being ultimately the only effective combatant to the monster? I think I think psychological certainly here. <laughs> <laughs> psychological studies will, will show you um, in reality that women tend to handle terrible crises better than men do. Um, maybe not across the board, not maybe not every woman versus every man, but I think it certainly um, exists inside of us strengths that we never realized we had. Do you think there's something about women generally at the risk of overgeneralizing that especially responds to the horror genre? And I mean, you can go back hundreds of years to the gothic novel and female audiences of readers to see them really developing and supporting the horror fiction across the board. At least it seems that way. I think that, I think that, that women prefer that fantasy element, knowing that perhaps um, there are situations and there are characters that um, aren't in situations that they would find themselves in mm -hmm. so, that they can, so that they can extrapolate and enjoy the experience without feeling personally threatened. Was there a special involvement or uh, oh, p energy that you brought to the role of Sigourney Weaver here? I think Sigourney's got <laughs> everything to do with her character. <laughs> I don't think she needed any help uh -huh. at all. You're not going to take fantastic. any credit for that? No. Not for Sigourney. Okay. However, I assume that that was a direction that you and she were in perfect harmony about. Absolutely. We, we talked about the project before she agreed to commit to do it. Um, and she found that, that both Jim and I had the same perspective about developing her character mm -hmm. and making it a character piece rather than just a straight um, action, uh, science fiction, horror film in which the characters mm -hmm. were secondary. Now, if you were the mother of nine-year-old Carrie Henn, would you take her to see this film in its final version, or would you take any nine-year-old daughter? I would take Carrie. Carrie's a very, very adult nine-year-old. She had no problems at all with, with any of the things mm -hmm. that we did on the film. Um, in fact, before Mrs. Hen allowed her to take on the role, she showed her Alien, which is a pretty terrifying piece of filmmaking. And Carrie was not frightened. Carrie did not have nightmares. And mm -hmm. Carrie didn't jump. on unlike the, probably the rest of us. And as a result of that, I don't think it was an unhealthy experience for her. I do think, though, yeah, that it, it has to, to be here. a parent's decision as to what kind of entertainment would 
have a negative effect on their kids because kids tend to internalize some things and have a longer lasting uh, effect as a result of seeing something that puts a child in jeopardy, which, which this film does. Mm -hmm. It seems that even within the span of a few years, a generation of kids will be scared by one thing that within five years another generation will not be over much disturbed by. That's bizarre. That is strange. The audience that was terrified by aliens may need more to get that same high here. I, I, I think that, um, that society, as a society evolves, what, what terrifies us, what stimulates us is changing all mm. the time as well. And, uh, Tell us about Tech Noir. What a great name Thank you. for a production company, and I gather that that's a, an endeavor that you are sharing with James Cameron. Absolutely. We, we, um, we picked the name because it, it's very close to our hearts. It's the name of the nightclub that was shot up in Terminator. <laughs> I forgot that. Oh my God. Well, all right. Fair and, enough. And we thought it, it was also <laughs> fairly representative of the kind of films that we've done and hopefully the kind of films that we tend to continue to do. Um, not to the exclusion of other genres mm -hmm. and, other, and other focuses, but... Um, but you know what? I would think that having seen Aliens now in its final version, you would say, where can I go? after this is the only Hawaii. direction in a completely opposite direction I mean this is like this is the summit somehow what what can we do next well I've, I've got a project that doesn't involve Jim um, that mm. I'm going to be doing hopefully in the interim and it's a very very small picture human drama that that deals with apartheid in South Africa not something perhaps that people would would immediately presume that I would be doing but uh -huh. I've got a multitude of interests and that's certainly something that that I'm quite concerned about and um, and hope to to educate the public about and well you know pictures like Killing Fields and Salvador in their own respect are horror films in many real ways and I'm wondering if you see in the tragedy over there at least some of those elements coming into place. I, I, I see things that um, I see wrongs certainly that need to be righted and I, I think that that anything that you can do to reach a lot of people to make them aware of what it, the situation is like for an individual as opposed to perhaps just what they see on the news will enlighten them a great deal. Chalk this one up against old tactless John here, but you seem pretty young to be where you are in the movie industry. May I ask how old you are? I'm 30. And with already that much experience behind you... I, have to, I really have to thank Roger Corman for that. Oh. Okay, so to be 30 where you are, I assume that's the way it should be. That's the way it's tracking according to your own career chart. I mean, that's what you want? That's good? I don't think I had a five-year plan or a ten-year <laughs> plan. <laughs> so so it, it's, it's good because I can roll with the punches mm -hmm. and, I can, and I can feel like perhaps if I want to take some time off, I'm not jeopardizing um, that plan. Well, I've talked to other producers like Lauren Schuler and some, and uh, th this seems to be a really good time for young women producers. We seem to have lots of problems with good roles for women in the movies, and yet we see more and more very able producers. Sometime is that going to connect up? I certainly hope that uh, that the that the role of women in filmmaking in general is improved as a result of uh, of the c continued uh, involvement of women. And in the meantime, you're helping to scare the hell out of us <laughs> in Aliens. Gail Anhurt is producer of that picture. And with Gail from New York City for KCTV5, I'm John Tibbetts.